the first film, you got to make a film that people would consider as the only good you know, video game movie. Now we're in the world of, of the full internet, we get to bring in a lot more. Was it kind of like constricting of like, how, what, what am I gonna pull in now? What am I gonna use? Where, where do we go from here? It was hugely challenging when we first came up with the idea of the internet. It's like saying, You're gonna, we're gonna do a movie about New York City. Cool! And then you go, well wait, there's Penn Station, there's the Lower East Side, there's Harlem, there's Brooklyn, there's the Bronx, there's da da da, eight million stories. And so it became very daunting very quickly. And the way we were kind of able to ground it is figuring out exactly the story we want to tell about Ralph and Vanellope's friendship, because ultimately that's at the core of this movie. It's about two friends who go to this new place and their friendship is tested as a result of it. Richard, you want to add anything else though? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, and Joseph, like I said, you've worked with, with, with these gentlemen multiple times on multiple projects, including both Ralph's here in Zootopia. And, right. you know, people may, you know, you have the credit as Juliana Bing Bing, but... <laughs> <laughs> do you yeah. have, I mean, I imagine you're probably all over the place in these films. Is that, is that the case? Mm -hmm. The way that these guys work is um, very intensely in the editorial room, in the cutting room, and so we'll watch a sequence um, in storyboard form and then um, decide to make some changes and sometimes it's on the fly. You know, you, Phil will write some new lines and I'm sitting there drawing new storyboards and we're coming up with different ideas, new ideas, and then we'll just say, okay, uh, who wants to do the new line for... <laughs> Jubilina Bing Bing or, you know, new characters and so we'll just get up there and do fun voices. And it's it's sort of like we test out new material and then it just somehow just ends up in the films and I think that's how I ended up there. And, and, and in the editing room we've set up a microphone, you know, so we can just do it right there, you know, as we're cutting the, the movie. And we've kind of become like a four-person troupe, acting troupe, mm -hmm. where it's yeah. Phil and I and Josie and Pam Ribbon, uh, the co-writer on this movie. And when we when we do the scratch track, um, it's the four of us doing every character because mm -hmm. we we rewrite and try different types of dialogue in every scene. And if we were to expect like John C. Riley and Sarah Silverman to perform all this stuff. It, it would just it would burn any actor out, you know. We're yeah. we're just trying so just a tonnage of different ideas um, before we kind of land on you know the ones that we want that we then kind of you know go to John and Sarah to, to record it. I, I think we, it's it's funny because we have we've gone through a history of film uh, and storytelling where people never really were able to get the true feelings of nostalgia. We've come right. to it somehow as of yeah. right now. And I like, is there anything that signals to you why that's now working so well? Well, I would think that, um, say like the first Wreck-It Ralph, that truly was a love letter to video game arcades. You know, it really came from a place of real experience of spending time with those games, of loving those games, and I think that's what really, you know, connects to an audience when they feel like, okay, this is, I love those games too, and I'm watching a, a piece of entertainment that's made by someone like me, you know, and because we're, we're fans of all that stuff. We love, we love the Disney characters, we love the Pixar characters, the Marvel, you know, characters, the Star Wars characters. Um, so we want to do right by them, but have a good time, you know, in, in satirizing, again, the tropes, you know, of, of, of what we all, all know and love, you know, about that stuff. And, sure. I just you know. wanted to add, like, for me with the princesses, what I, you know, I grew up loving Little Mermaid, and my favorite Disney animated movie is Cinderella. Um, what I love about this little take is that it's, we get to see another side of them that's a little more relatable and human, and so it's both nostalgic and yet modern at the same time. And that's what I, I love that I get to see Cinderella, but then she's in a sweatshirt, you know, just kind of flopping on a beanbag. Like, that makes her just that much closer to, to me and to sort of a new generation of animation fans and, and film fans.